Halo Infinite has had a great start, but to keep this momentum going, they have to do a lot in 2022 to keep Halo Infinite relevant. So in this video, we're going to talk about everything 343 needs to do to keep Halo's momentum going throughout the all of 2022. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Though not perfect, the launch of Halo Infinite has done very well compared to what is out there right now. Battlefield dropping the ball, Call of Duty being kind of boring this year, Halo's looking really good right now. But there certainly is a lot of room of improvement there for Halo Infinite to be a true up to par Halo game that we expect to have for the community here. So in this video, we're going to be talking about what 343 needs to do to maintain this momentum and what to expect throughout the year of 2022 for Halo Infinite as well. As a Halo news and info guy, I've been keeping up to date with every single blog update. I've seen 343's rhythm and cadences when it comes to updates. So I think I have a pretty good idea of what to expect from this year from 343. And we're going to be talking about that. We're talking about like a roadmap, seasonal updates, what features are going to come in. And also like talking about population and XP ranking system possibly. And will we get campaign DLC? Well, let's not waste any more time and get right into the video here. So one of the first things 343 absolutely needs to do to give people hope and expectations for the rest of 2022 is to release a roadmap. I'm sure you all remember this image from Halo 5 detailing the monthly updates throughout the spring and summer of 2016. This is something I think the community greatly needs to help kind of ease a lot of concerns of what's coming up for Halo Infinite in 2022. Franchises like Call of Duty, for example, release a roadmap every season letting you know what maps, modes, attachments, new things you can buy in the store, and everything in between comes out for that season. But then we also get mid-season updates as well, usually kind of bringing something fresh and new to the game. Kind of a nice little mid-season update that kind of either update the sandbox, weapons, new modes, new maps, or something interestingly happening with the mid-season update. Especially a mid-season update would be extremely needed for season one as it's lasting twice as long as a season normally should as we do expect each season to last about three months Season 1's gonna last 6 months, and I've already grinded through the Battle Pass, and I know a good chunk of the community has as well. Because I released this poll on my YouTube channel, if you guys want to take part of these polls, so make sure to subscribe to the channel to catch them when they go live, but 22,000 people voted in this poll, and 28% are at 81 to 100 tier in the Battle Pass right now. But you can still see a considerable chunk of people are below 80. But that reckoning, I'm going to call it, is going to be coming because there's going to be a point where people are going to be like, I grind into the battle pass, there's nothing left for me to do. So a mid-season update for season one would be greatly needed. That's what comes from having a nice roadmap to get let us know what's going to happen. Now, I expect it to be a tentative roadmap, as in subject to change, because that's kind of how 343 has been working, right? Ever since the MCC of it's ready when it's ready. That's why we didn't get co-op at launch. That's why we're getting Forge late in the later half of the year, because we're not going to release a product when it's not ready. Now, what kind of content can we expect throughout the year, right? Where well, this is where this roadmap really helps out. Let us know what maps are going to come in. I'm fully expecting probably about three BTB maps throughout the entirety of the year, with each season probably bringing a new BTB map, and also probably about like four-ish maps. I mean, we could have like five or six. We could have maybe two. We don't know. But I do expect new modes to be brought in along with these new maps as well. We talked about this previously that there was leaked information that modes like Assault, Extraction, Multi-Team, Infection, VIP, Juggernaut, King of the Hill, and Ricochet all have assets within the game files that you can data mine for. I mean, I do expect to see like doubles and like maybe shoddy snipes come in for like a temporary rotational mode. Uh, but also, hopefully we'll see attrition eventually come in. We saw it in promotional material, we just haven't seen it in the game yet. So we'll definitely will be seeing some new modes. I'm expecting to have like a rotational playlist, kind of like what we have right now with the MCC, but the same thing with Halo Infinite. I do expect more features to come out as well. I'm talking about like co-op, replayable missions, anti-cheat, make ranking system updates and things like that. I wouldn't be surprised to see co-op get delayed because after from what we played from the campaign, it's highly complex with mission progression, the way that unlocks work and like who gets to play as Master Chief, do you get to play as your multiplayer sport? And since they are canon, that would make sense within the co-op lore wise. Currently planned for the May release of season two, but we just have to wait and see. Talking about mission progression, we have replayable missions, which we don't have right now in Halo Infinite, which I do expect it to come out in 2022. We just do not have a release time frame right now. In an interview, 343 lead Paul Crocker talks about play replayable missions, saying that obviously they haven't announced a date yet. The reason I'm being a bit cagey is honestly, I don't know exactly, but he does confirm that people are working on it right now. He just doesn't have an answer or a time frame when the replayable missions will come to Halo Infinite. 
I do also expect to see updates to the anti-cheat. As you guys have seen, plenty of clips online right now of cheaters. Now, personally, I haven't come across that, but that's because I'm like a diamond tier player within ranked modes. So that's probably something you'd see more on the higher skill level where you see cheaters actually playing in the lobbies. But this is just not good PR, right? I mean, it's not as rampant as it was with Warzone back a few months ago, though I could see it getting worse if uh, people at large start figuring out how to cheat within Halo. This is part of that never ending arm race against cheaters. Like you're never gonna fully crush cheaters in your game. They're always gonna be there. It's just how fast is the turnaround from catching a cheater and getting them off the game. And right now the report player option in game just isn't there and reporting the player isn't really that well fleshed out. So could we see a report player in game? Possibly, I would like to see that. That's something that we got with the MCC that I think would be great for Halo Infinite as well. I'm talking about high ranking matches and just ranking up in general. I'm totally expecting to see rank matchmaking updates happen as well. As the lead multiplayer designer at 343 did say on Twitter that that's one of the highest priorities when they get back into the office, which they just got back into the office, saying that they're going to be looking into matchmaking data and figure out ways to improve the ranking system. Because right now it's good. But it's not great. But 343 needs a good amount of data to work off of to make these proper changes, which I think now we probably have a good set data set where you can actually could see some changes coming re relatively soon. Next, I want to talk about which is a big topic right now within the community right now, and that's population of Halo Infinite. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the Steam charts discussion that we've been seeing online right now, where we had a really high peak of almost 260,000 people almost playing at one time. But recently been kind of averaging more about 46,000, 47,000 people playing at peak average player counts. Which this drop off of population is completely normal for any kind of shooter out there. And though this only is Steam numbers, it doesn't take in consideration Xbox players and Game Pass players as well. But one could imagine that the trend is about the same. Though you can see right here on Xbox's most played games, number four on the list here, just behind Fortnite, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, is Halo. More people are playing Halo than Apex Legends right here. Now, Xbox doesn't share their exact numbers, but you can kind of get an idea of how popular Halo is right now, still. I think we're starting to get close to where like our baseline population will be. I think anywhere from like 50,000 to 100,000 players probably playing at one time with all platforms taken into consideration since the game is cross-play. I fully expect all playlists to be super healthy. You're not going to be coming across a whole lot of laggy situations or any kind of lopsided matches. Because I honestly have a feeling that like we're gonna have this big swoop where people first jump in, it's gonna swoop down to a baseline, and it's gonna gradually, I feel like, go back up as more and more people realize how good a Halo Infinite really is. Next, I wanna talk about XP progression, which the only type of progression we have right now in Halo Infinite is through the battle pass, which is all right, but I do like to have some kind of like external XP system to kind of showcase how much you played the game. People love the showcasing how much they've enjoyed Halo. That's why like people grind so much for like MCC ranks or got 152 in Halo 5 beyond just, you know, bragging rights, but also getting the watchdog camo. Though I don't believe we will get an XP progression system this year. As that's something that would require a lot of reworking when it comes to XP payouts and how you receive XP within the game. One, they would have to build out an XP progression system just in general. That's already just enough work by itself right there. Putting all the art together, putting the name of ranks and numbers and things like that is certainly doable. And can it be done this year? Given the right resources? I think so. I just don't plan on seeing that happen this year. If I remember correctly, Call of Duty even got rid of their like overarching progression system, right? It's still there, but it's only like per season XP rather than like overarching how much you play throughout the entirety of the game, which I certainly would prefer an overarching entirety of the game kind of XP system. And I do think we'll get it eventually in Halo Infinite, but within the first year of 2022, I don't really think so. There's too many big name tickets like Forge and Co-op, any new content into the game as well. They're going to take priority over an XP system. The last bit I want to talk about is campaign DLC. I've seen this question a lot. People are going, are we going to get DLC? I say yes. It's just a more a matter of when and how we will get it. I'm going to swing for the fences on this one and say that we will get campaign DLC this year. The dangerous thing about that is that it sets a precedent of saying, okay, at the end of every year, essentially, you'll be getting some campaign DLC, which is a lot of work to put together. 
But let me tell you why we will get some campaign DLC this year. We did recently get this leaked cutscene reveal showcasing Chief and the pilot together, seeing something along the horizon that looked very promising for our friends over here in the world of Zeta Halo. And so this could be something that was tied in to another part of the campaign that might have been cut for time or content wise. Uh, so we could see something along this lines showing up. This could maybe even be brought into like the beginning of the next bit of content that we could see for a campaign DLC. We also had this scene right here from the campaign gameplay trailer from 2020 that was completely cut from the game. This scene is not in the game, but it was intended to be in the game back in 2020. And I talk about this in my video, breaking down some of the art and concept art that was in part of the Halo Infinite art book, and how we saw this Forerunner structure with this exact same coloring and three eye dot pattern in the concept art gives me big hope that this was like some pretty well fleshed out content that got cut for extra time and you can see there are four images of this large forerunner structure going against master chief right like this guy definitely looks like not like a guardian but some other kind of structure here that was some kind of plan maybe like boss fire or villain that might have been cut for time for halo if it's campaign but seeing these three red dots right here makes you think it's some kind of correlation with that and this is content that was made probably voice acted play tested that just got cut for time that couldn't quite make it for the fi final release of the game so i'm gonna swing for the fences and say we will get some cut content released as an expansion pack for campaign of halo infinite it might not exactly be a new environment because most of those concept pieces of concept art seem very much familiar with what we've seen already i feel like when we do get expansions they won't be as fully fleshed out or as long as like the vanilla campaign that received i think they might be a little bit more traditional length of like three to six maybe eight hours worth of content on like a separate island added into the world of zeta halo again this is something that could come with the roadmap which i think 343 is gonna be working on and probably releasing something later this year once we get some concrete information to guarantee i'll let you guys know on this channel by the way if you like the music you've heard today guys our boys at rocket sloth recently released a brand new album which is kind of like a lo-fi cyber wave kind of sound to the whole thing it's nice instrumental tracks guys if you want to give them a listen give them a download go check out some of their songs the one i like a lot is skeletron 3000 check this out right here Link to their website down below in the description as well. So if you guys are new or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.